Ultimately, I started to recognize when things didn't work, it was possibly because there were better ways to do it and I wasn't conscious of it. Consciousness is creating our life experiences. Lack of knowledge is a lack of power. Quantum physics as a, as a science is theoretical ideas have almost all been materialized in the research. And I go, so what's important? I go, primary number one principle. Ready? Consciousness is creating our life experiences. We are creators. That's quantum physics. Uh, and, and the idea about that, then I look at people and I go, well, how's your creation going here? <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's not really going very well. I said, but you're the creator. And it's like, well, no, I feel like the victim. And I go, lack of knowledge is a lack of power. It's a very simple understanding because the brain is an information processor, a computer. It's exactly what it is. And now that we have so much familiarity with the uh, silicon based computer, this carbon based computer in here is the same fundamental mechanisms that both use the same thing. Not until I put programs in the computer can I use the computer. The idea is in the last trimester of pregnancy, a fetus brain lights up, screens on, but it can't do anything until programs come in. And so the first seven years of a child's life, the brain is functioning at a vibration. And let me just emphasize vibration because what was that? Uh, you put wires on a person's head, it's called electroencephalograph, and you can read brain function. But the functions are in vibration frequencies, okay? The lowest frequency is delta, that's sleep. The highest frequency, well, it's called gamma, that's peak performance. Uh, and then one that we're almost always in is beta, which is thinking, schoolroom, focused consciousness. When you go home at night from that beta thinking process, you relax, then the vibrations even slow down a bit more. And then you're in alpha, which is calm consciousness. And then the moment you fall asleep, the moment you just lost it, you're gone. Your brain is in now a lower vibration called theta. Well, a child's life is in theta for the first seven years. I go, so what does it represent? Theta is hypnosis. Why, why should the child's brain be in hypnosis? And the answer is, that's how it got programs. Uh, you know, there's, uh, it just observes. Watch your father, watch your mother, watch your family, community. You're observing them like a video recorder. And whatever behavior they're experiencing, you are downloading that kind of behavior. Why? You want to be a member of the family and community. You got to follow the rules. And so what are the rules? Observe them, download them. Unfortunately, there's no uh, filter device, meaning good stuff gets downloaded, bad stuff gets downloaded. Filter to say good or bad, it's all getting downloaded, okay? So I say, why are we downloading these behaviors? And the answer is you need the fundamental behaviors to be the member of a family and a community. And these are programs and you copy people. And I go, well, okay, so your subconscious is like a hard drive in a computer. It's got programs in it. And uh, the subconscious is strictly that. And a lot of people think, oh, that's the evil comes from subconscious. I go, subconscious is a hard drive just like in your computer. Is your computer hard drive evil? <laughs> you know, it's no, it's yeah. a device, but it's the programs you put in there could be good or bad. That's So I'll give you a good program. Uh, when did you learn how to walk? Before you were two years old. Mm -hmm. I say, for most people, they can be 102 years old, they're still walking, same program. So those right. programs that come in are pretty fundamental. They can carry us all the way through life. Now, of course, since I said it's not filtered, about 60% of the downloaded programs, behaviors that are in that subconscious are uh, disempowering or self-sabotaging or limiting beliefs we acquired from other people. Programming came from people who know that's how you take power of people. If I program mm. you, I have power over you, okay? And the first powers came from simply this. Humans are the only organism that know that they're going to die. No other organism knows it's going to die. Well, this is a stress. <laughs> like, oh my God, my life will end. Ah, you know, and that freaks out a lot of people. And that whole thing is then the fear of dying. And fear is when you look for somebody to help you get over the fear. You don't, if you're in fear, you don't look for yourself. <laughs> you're the one that's the, the victim more or less, and you're right. looking for somebody to help. It's the programming in the first seven years of your life that you're going to run that life from. The program is observing other people. If your father was well off and well to do, then you unconsciously downloaded the behavior to manifest what he was manifesting. But if you come from a poor family and all you talk about is struggle and we can't get there and it's so hard and life is trouble and blah, 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 you downloaded that one. I say, so most of us did not come from the rich family one. 
okay? Right. And that means most of us do have a concern about, what if I don't have the money? You know, I can't get health care. I can't get food. I can't, where am I going to sleep? I, homeless people, where do they come from, you know? Uh, and so the significance about all this is, if you're concerned about the money, you're concerned about the fact that your programming said you're not successful, that you're not going to make it. This is a rat race. That's Darwinian theory, which has screwed us big time because it's false. And it was based on Darwinian theory. It's a struggle for survival based on competition, winner, loser competition, you know? And I said, that is completely not the drive force of evolution. It's actually the 180 degrees opposite drive force. Uh, give a simple point. A garden is not a battleground. By definition, a garden is everybody's cooperating. Then we come into the garden, evolve, and then guess what? We turned it into a battleground. And guess what? <laughs> now we're facing an extinction because we're destroying the ecosystem that provides for us. So the point was this. Battleground was never built into the system. It was acquired. People seeking power over each other, uh, you know, and it started with force. The first power is force. <laughs> you don't want it my way? <laughs> now you do it my way. And, uh, and that was the first power that came in. Uh, and people are living under a misbelief that life is a struggle. And if they don't go out there in that rat race and compete like all the other rats out there, they're going to not make it. So guess what? Everybody's out on a you know, competition bent. And the unfortunate part, here's a sports person, sir. The definition of competition is not the one we're using today. That's an inaccurate definition. The way we look at competition, that's a winner-loser conflict. You know, whether it's two sports team, winner-loser, whatever it is, okay? But no, the original definition of competition to strive together. Really? What does that mean? It says, you want to be a tennis player? Don't play the weaker person. You're not going to learn anything from him. Play the, the more powerful person. Why? It's a competition, but what was the point? I'll do better if I learn by playing from the, the better player than if I learn from the weaker player. Right. So that kind of competition isn't winner loser. Both people win. The guy who's better won the game. The other guy wins. Why? Now I got better, you know, technique. So we live in a winner loser competition, which is uh, leads to violence and struggle and war and all that other like that. Uh, not recognizing evolution says, get back into the garden, man. The thing is cooperating in the garden. <laughs> the very first thing is this, even before the money, I said, what was the first one? I said, you have to love yourself because that means you will take care of yourself. And people don't love themselves. They don't take care of themselves. And you know that you've seen people yeah physiologically fall apart in front of your face. They have a pet. Oh man, my pet's going to get the best food. My pet's going to get the best health care. I'm going to, you know, take care of this pet. Do they take care of themselves? Not as good as they take care of the pet <laughs> right away. There's your problem. So number one is first identify you love yourself because then everything you do after that will be supporting your love. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Then deservability. I do not deserve. Why? Well, that's what I was programmed. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not beautiful enough, whatever. I go, well, you better start programming. I deserve X. I deserve Y. Okay. Not I will deserve. I deserve. Any futurism in a subconscious mind doesn't work because subconscious doesn't see future. It just sees the moment. Mm -hmm. So if you record, I will be wealthy. I will be healthy. Uh, I say, when's that going to happen? I go, well, put it in the record. We'll come back next year and let's push the button. And it says, I will be healthy. And I go, can't get there because I never said you were there. You're only in a want. <laughs> you can't get there. So the idea is that's why everything, go back to, it has to be in the present tense. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am this and I am lovable. You know, so that's really important. That's if, if you don't do that right, then, but you can always reprogram. That's the beautiful part. Be conscious of what you're asking for, because the, the more detail you put in, the more the universe can manifest a resolution. If you leave a lot of blanks in what you want, then all of a sudden it's like, well, it's random. Whatever fills in the blank because you never said what you wanted. You can have an idea of what you want, and that's important. But the most important part of that, just having an idea, is not just have a broad idea. I want X. And I go, no, no. What exactly do you want? Why? Consciousness is creating our life experiences. I go, well, that sounds new agey. I go, no, this is not new agey. This is the primary principle of quantum physics. We are creators. This is a fact. In fact, uh, quantum physics says that. But now let me add one other fact. 
Epigenetics says the same thing, because epigenetics says your consciousness is controlling your behavior and your genes. And so it's time to stop for a second and recognize, where is your consciousness? What are you thinking about? And the idea is, start thinking all those very positive thoughts, but don't try and tell the universe how it's going to manifest, okay? You think of the picture, let the universe get you there. And that's the most important lesson I've learned. I'm not telling the universe how I'm going to get there. I'm just saying, universe, this is where I want to go. And then the universe will take care of it. It's so powerful. It's so wonderful. And I never believed in it for the first 40, 50 years of my life. But I can tell you now, the life that I'm manifesting today is a consequence of just what I said. Focus on the end. Don't tell the universe the means to get there.